Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Dave Rogers with Meet the Author. And today I have a incredible musician, composer, collaborator, author here in Canada. Rob Carley, how are you today? I'm well, Dave. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. And I'm really thrilled to have uh, some time with you today to talk about uh, music and projects that you're involved with. Would you mind uh, sharing with our listeners uh, what uh, is the name of your book and what types of things uh, gets you excited for the coming year? Sure. So the name of the book is The Austin Music Project, Songs of Hope and Happiness. Um, I should bring up. The yes, it's there it is. There. That's the book right there. And um, what this is, is the collection of stories told by Canadians from coast to coast about the healing power of music. And it all started as just an idea, um, really, to raise money um, for CAMH, for the Center of Addiction and Mental Health here in Toronto. Um, and it quickly blossomed into a much larger campaign uh, to support the research and, um, and to support music therapy programs and to support the idea of uh, something that we all intrinsically know, I think, is the idea that music has a healing power. And we explore that in this collection of stories. And there's about a hundred, well, not about, there's exactly 111 stories uh, told by people from all different walks of life. Some of them are musicians. Uh, some of them you'll know, like Sarah McLaughlin, Michael Bublé, Chris Hatfield, or Rick Mercer. And lots of them you wouldn't know, uh, like um, healthcare workers or teachers or cab drivers or your next door neighbor. And they all share um, a little bit of an anecdote about how important music has been in their life and maybe a, a time when it either got them through a hard time or a song that maybe changed their, the course of their life or just has had a long lasting important memory to them. Uh, and that's the essence of the book. Wow, that, I, I, there is so many levels I could go and, and, and chat with you about this. And I hope we will have further times to talk about and distill it even further. I, I'm, I'm awe-inspired. Uh, just so happens the name of one of my first book was called Awesome Coaching, which was about sharing stories about how coaching can shift people's perspective and, and make things happen. And then my last uh, few businesses were with a rock musician where we used to travel the world and, and hold soul journeys that allowed people to reconnect to the vibration of the planet in oh, their cool. ways of releasing and healing. Uh, you mentioned the essence of the book. Now, we know that most books, when they're purchased, are never fully read. So I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to take a deep breath in and can you distill down perhaps the in essence of the book into a point or a key thought? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's funny, first of all, before I do that, the, the idea that the book is, isn't fully read, this is, is really episodic in nature. I mean, you can really literally pick it up anywhere and read one story that's, you know, four or 500 words long. Um, each, each story, uh, like I said, there's 111 of them. Um, it looks like this. I mean, there's a, there's a, um, here's a story from Leona Boyd, the the well-known classical guitarist. Uh, and so the story's here, and then and then there's a little sort of full album cover, uh, and it looks like this. And then there's also here's Rick Mercer's. You know, he's got a little. He talks about the song uh, "Raise a Little Hell" from the band Trooper. Yes. How yes. it's sort of been an anthem for him. Um, and so the essence of the book is is really just. Um, trying to connect with people in a way uh, in which, you know, everybody has, if I ask you what's your favorite song or your, your happy song, I think everyone has a piece of music or even a band or a record or maybe even a specific song that to them, they hold very dear to them. And that is the essence of the book. It really is, you know, that's how it all started was um, uh, my uh, co-founder of this, of the movement, Terry Stewart, uh, trying to figure out um, what everyone's happy song was. He would just ask every, anyone who would listen, What's your happy song? And he, he was trying to um, come up with a list of, of, of happy songs that yes. then he could share with everybody. And he thought, well, those will make everyone happy, which of course isn't exactly how music works because your happy song could be, you know, I could loathe it or <laughs> it could send me nothing. But in, in, in asking that question, we found that it wasn't so much about what the song is. Uh, it's more about what the story is and the, and the story behind that song and the importance that that story represents to different people. And I think there's a huge um, uh, communion of people who have this shared interest in music. I think, it, you know, uh, I don't think I'm exaggerating by saying everybody at some level connects with music. And to hear that in, in the narrative, uh, I think is a really great reminder about the power of music and how we can, we can use it in you know, times of, of joy or in times of despair. It can be a real uh, 
helpful guiding healing force. I love the idea of the healing component because uh, one of the things I did this past year is I hired a therapist and two things that really happened to me when I was a young child was uh, trauma related to drawing and art and trauma related to music. So yes. for most of my life, for over 40 years, I didn't sing, I didn't like music, I didn't like art. And this past year, I've actually let go of those traumas. And I've been drawing, I've been painting, I've been writing music. And it's just absolutely, and it gives me goosebumps to say that because there are many people out there that I'm sure that they were traumatized because they were embarrassed, they were ashamed, they, they had this, this, this trauma and it, it could even be their ancestral trauma that gets passed on through the yeah. DNA. And so music can be such a healing component, yet there's that beautiful dynamic between the left brain and the right and the, and the heart and the way it, it flutters when we do connect to our soul song, our oh. soul tone. And it's, I love what you're doing. And I, I love the idea of a movement about this. And I look forward to hearing more. Is there something that you would love to see happen in, in, the, in the next 12 months with the awesome song movement? Yeah, well, what, you know, bringing up the idea that it is ultimately a movement. I mean, yes, it's a book, a story, but that book became really just the beginning of a much larger uh, chapter. Uh, and what that, the whole goal of our, of our charity is to, like I say, raise money, um, to help fund research um, around the therapeutic effect of music. So music therapy, for example, the initial project we were funding was down at the Center for Addiction Mental Health, a research project that was trying to uh, demonstrate the effectiveness of music therapy on the brain at the, at the chemistry level. Yes. By using, uh, not just, um, you know, trying to get some more evidence to, to, support, um, to support the idea of music therapy because you know, frankly, when, when people are suffering from anxiety or depression, the first line of defense often is uh, th uh, sort of some sort of pharmaceutical solution, yes. um, which, is, which is fine, but it's, you know, there are a lot of side effects and it's not necessarily effective for everyone. And I've always believed that music has a certain healing power yes. and we're trying yes. to explore that. So that was the initial idea behind our research project. And then we started to fund different types of programs uh, coast to coast. So we, although we started in Toronto, we are, we are now trying to fund programs all over the country. And in fact, during this pandemic, uh, we decided to shift our focus away from trying to do live events, which was our first kind of um, uh, successful way of, of, of really raising money. We a few events where we would pair storytellers with singer songwriters, with scientists. And the three would, you know, we'd have a storyteller tell a story and then a singer songwriter would perform uh, the song from that story. And then a scientist would get up and do like a little mini TED talk on what's happening in our brain. And those events we found were really successful, but we had a few planned in 2020, which possibly got canceled. Absolutely. So then we shifted to the idea of doing digital music therapy, uh, specifically targeting long-term care homes initially. So we did uh, a pilot program in Bob Cajun um, at a, a uh, long-term care facility there that was hit particularly hard by the pandemic called Pinecrest. And then we moved on to uh, another program here in Toronto, which was at a book club at a, a long-term care. And then we're doing a, a pilot now at Grand River Hospital in Waterloo Region that's more geared toward youth. And we're starting things out in Calgary and we're trying to do one uh, with an indigenous community in Labrador of all places. So it's like, you know, we're trying to really target, you know, at, at the essence of the book, we were trying to just target, target, um, um, looking for an audience of people who, you know, were looking for uh, some kind of solace or some kind of comfort in the healing power of music. And then we've sort of shifted more to looking at vulnerable communities. And so we started with what I thought was a very obvious vulnerable community at the early part of the pandemic. And that was, you know, uh, long-term care homes and people who are isolated. And now we're sort of looking at other vulnerable communities. People, you know, isolation is, is a big part of this pandemic, obviously. And then, not only on the personal level, but also communities that are kind of disconnected. So something like music therapy, if you live in a big city, um, it's it's fairly accessible. But if you live in a small community, if you're in Flin Flon, Manitoba, there may not even be a music therapist there. Yeah. And so by by providing digital music therapy and digital delivery of this, this idea, I think it can be something that can really help a lot of people. So it takes a lot of work to get it off the ground, but that's the essence of our um, our movement is bringing the healing power of music to the masses. Beautiful. I love it. And thank you so much for sharing. I got a fun question for you for this coming year. If we could get your book into the hands of somebody around the world, uh, give me a name or two, please. You mean like a famous person? Yeah, 
Yeah, it could but be a famous like, person, or it could be a researcher, or it could be who. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm always, we're always looking. I mean, I was going to say, like, the queen, maybe. Maybe the queen would like the book. No, um, I think, uh, I don't know why I said the queen. I'm not a monarchist, necessarily. Yeah. I, maybe it's because it's, you know, it's everywhere in the news right now with the crown. And the, um, I think the book has got a universal appeal because it's really, uh, our goal is that you, you can read it, and there are so many different um, backgrounds, both in terms of, uh, you know, workplace, ethnicity, um, age, demographics, uh, geography. We're trying to be as sort of representative as, as, as possible of Canada, which is kind of a big place. And so we hope that, you know, the book can resonate with all kinds of different people. So somebody in, in Bangladesh could pick up the book and sort of find a story there that might resonate with them. So that's, you know, when you say, who could it be? I, I hope it's, it's universal in, in its appeal and that therefore it could be almost anyone well, uh, I, I'm looking more so for that law of attraction type of name that, you know, that it could take it to the next level, the movement uh, to the next level. Or well, we are. I mean, we're always appealing to, I mean, I think a lot of pe people who are very public, who have a public um, uh, platform, but have also been very um, uh, open about their own struggles with mental health, I think are really good candidates. And I know people like, you know, uh, good Canadian uh, singer songwriters like Justin Bieber and Sean Mendez are two yes. uh, names, for example, that everyone knows, and they've been very candid about their own kind of like, uh, not maybe necessarily their personal struggles uh, in all cases, but definitely they uh, they understand the importance of mental yes. health and realize it to be a very much a concern for many many people, especially these days. So you know, having someone like you know Sean Mendez pick up the book and say, yeah. "Yeah, I'd love to do a concert where where I can do the songs." I like it in the stories. It gives I mean, me goosebumps. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> that would be, I think, a wonderful thing to yes. have. You know, I, um, um, I think he's got a great, I really respect what he's doing in terms of his career. He's got yes. some great stuff happening. I mean, there's so many different musicians that I admire. And there are lots of musicians in the book, but I should say that the book isn't, um, it's a music book, but it's not written only by musicians. It's really, you know, it's important for us to just have people like who are non musicians um you know like former governor general david johnson's in the book and he talks about you know being a hockey player uh as a young man and how important music was you know he was a great hockey player i think he he was on the harvard hockey team if you if you can believe it so mm. there's a guy who's got so much talent um and uh, how important music was to him you know these are the kinds of of people that i find fascinating people who have great stories and you would never expect you know beautiful Great, Rob. I guess uh, let's figure out a way. How can people get a copy of your book? Sure. So um, we have a website called theawesomemusicproject.com. Okay. And on there, you can find out all about the campaign. You can find out, uh, you can see some of the stories. You can order the book online. You can order merchandise. Uh, you can buy the book, obviously, through any of your favorite book retailers. If it's online through Indigo, or it could be your local bookstore will order it in if they don't already have it. Uh, you know, Book City or... Uh, uh, type books or just whatever your bookstore of choice is um, and then you can also um, you can also look at, at some of the places you can donate money you can donate money directly to the awesome music project we just recently gained charitable status in Canada so sure. we can now issue our own tax receipts uh, you can donate directly to us or you can donate to one of our partners like the Canadian Music Therapy Trust Fund uh, which is partnering with us for our digital music therapy program or you could donate to the Canadian um, sorry the Center for Addiction and Mental Health uh, and our awesome music project research project down there. Well, we're going to put those links in the comment section below. So folks, uh, hit those links, go check out the awesome music project, go and engage, find ways. And I guess my last little fun question, Rob, is for those people that are aspiring authors or aspiring musicians, give us a, a, a word of advice uh, from somebody who has been through the journey. What would be a uh, your tip yeah. of the day. Well, I, I'm going to reluctantly wear the hat of author because I really feel like I'm more of a curator of stories because that's what this book is really about. Um, I, I suppose I'm the author of a, a charity campaign. That's but uh, a musician or a young any anyone who's in any art trying to get going, I guess the same could apply. I mean, it's ultimately about finding finding your voice and trying to find you know just trying to do your uh, what inspires you. If what inspires you. Uh, inspires somebody else then that means you have an audience it doesn't mean it's going to be a big audience but it's going to be an audience and that's really ultimately what you want to do is you want to create a voice for yourself and then um you know find that audience if it's just 
12 people or if it's uh, 1,200 people, who knows? Rob, that's a fantastic advice. Folks, we want you to explore, experiment, enjoy. We want you to reach out, click one of those buttons below, share it with a friend. There are future authors and future musicians that will be inspired to take some action from the words and the actions of Rob. But Rob, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Dave, for having me. Take care.